everyone, and welcome to Between Plays Stock Market Strategies. Today we have with us CEO Martin Ketman of Manganese X. It's been a while. Martin, how are you doing? Hey, Albert. Nice to be back again to see you. Nice summer. Things are progressing well, and we're really excited to update your viewers and uh, the people in, in interested in our company on what our happenings are and what we're progressing. That's amazing. You know, it's been a while. And, you know, you mentioned summer. How was your summer? Did you get some time to relax or was it all work? Because, uh, you know, even if you're a CEO, you need to have some time off. How was your summer? It was very hectic. <laughs> so very hectic. Right after our PEA, yeah. final, you know, final publicizing it, that was on really on uh, June 27th. We are aggressively progressing into a pilot project program. Yes. At That's Cometco right. in Richmond, British Columbia. So there has been so much preparation involved. Nobody would really know what's gone on behind the scenes. That's amazing. So, well, you know, uh, the last time we saw each other uh, was at the PDAC. I mean, um, I, I ended up catching COVID right after, and it, it threw me out for a month. So uh, I know you called me a few times to see how I was doing, and that's very much appreciated. It's very, very nice of you. It just shows how much of a good person that you are. But, uh, I, you know, I never got to talk about it. My viewers didn't get to hear anything about it. Uh, your PDAC experience, how was, uh, how was it out there? Tremendous. It was very exciting. Uh, they cut down the exhibitions, their exhibits, by, I think, by a third because of the COVID situation. Yeah. However, there was a great response. You know, a, a participation was at a record high there. And yeah. everybody is so bullish on the battery metals and the metals market at that time. Yes. You know, that time. So there's been a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of deal making and a lot of encouragement. So it's just tremendous. Nice meeting old acquaintances and talking about yeah. specific areas. And it was great. It was really good. Absolutely. I mean, it's important, right? Because uh, the two years of COVID, you know, you, you don't have this um, meeting of the minds, you know, in the industry. And, you know, that lacks, you know, and then all of a sudden you all get back together again. And then there's all this conversation, time to catch up. What are you doing? What am I doing? Um, and it's great. I mean, I, I was there and I saw there was a lot of enthusiasm when it comes to, you know, electric vehicles and the minerals for electric vehicles, you know, and of course, that is uh, manganese is one of them. Of course, that's why we up there. Um, you know what? I'm just going to go and ask you a few questions and, you know, where are we at today when it comes to um, where manganese, because uh, we've seen, you know, the PA, it came out. What's been the feedback since then? Well, we had a very, very robust economic outcome from our PA. Yes. I, I, you know, it's been really, really tremendous 47 years of production, you know, and uh, 486 uh, NPV. It was really, really good. 486 million US, 2.8 year payback. All this stuff. Big, big production. 86 thousand tons for the first seven years, and then 68 thousand tons for the next 40. About 40 years. Tremendous. We got calls worldwide. Oh, uh, sure, I'm. I'm sure that the, the your phone must be must be ringing uh, absolutely with with the numbers that you're putting up. Yes, we've got many, many calls. It's very interesting. Uh, we've got write-ups and calls, and uh, we've got calls, and we we have now uh, made NDAs with some very large EV cathode producers in the world, number one. We have some NDAs with some companies that want to become uh, participate in our company right now, but uh, yeah. we know we're, we're not rushing too quickly. And, um, and the thirdly, we've got some very interested parties in our technology because yeah. our technology is very groundbreaking and uh and very very cost effective well so. yeah that's because some i guess you know it, the, the technology that you're using especially when it comes to um you know, taking a nine percent carbonate and making it ev compliant um, without using that whole electro, um, what was that again? Electroplating, I believe. EMM it was electroplating. Yeah. Uh, material. Okay, and and because your your company, Manganese X, we don't have to do that. Like Cometco and all the processes that was uh, put in place, and 
of course, wood for the PA. Um, you have a technology that's very different. Um, it's cost effective and it's, um, how do you say it? it's, it's more green, right? It's more green, right? For the environment. Well, let me just clarify. It's called EMM, electroplating. As to our knowledge, we're the only company in the world that can do this, that can take a carbonate and produce it to a, a chemical compound of high purity manganese sulfate monohydrate. The, the norm is very simple. They take their uh, carbonate or oxide and they have to do something called electroplating where they have to take their, car their manganese material and have to uh, disperse it in sulfuric acid and electro wind it with electroplating. Okay. And uh, this is, first of all, there's a lot of contaminants in the uh, in their solution, in their sulfuric solution. Yes. So it's extremely, and take it from me, it's extremely difficult to get out all the uh, all the contaminants. There's about okay. 18 contaminants in their elements. Okay. And then they have to use a high amount of electricity. So it's extremely sensitive. You have to be extremely precise, extremely expensive and yes. it's not very environmentally friendly so i just hope i'm able to explain that because it's an extremely complicated uh, process and uh, a lot of our subscribers and and probably your viewers aren't aware of this process no definitely i'm gonna have to do a video on the differences between uh, you know like let's say the technology that uh, you're utilizing versus an electroplating type technology i i definitely have to do something on that uh, so that you know, people understand like how important your company is um, in in the in the field of um, EVs uh, and especially the differences you know that sets you apart when it comes to manganese. With your I company. just want to say one thing. I always say this. Yeah. It's very dear to my heart because we've been working on this project for over six and a half years. I just want to say that manganese is the forgotten mineral. Yes. It's going to be the mineral of the twenties. Because oh yeah it is amazing it's amazing it's forgotten because it's just a metal that nobody no notices or talks about but finally the public is starting to really understand the importance of manganese oh the, the public the, and uh, people like elon musk as well tesla yes uh, we know that yes. they're gearing more towards manganese uh, battery which is what the catl in china does well most of the larger ev companies now are voting for manganese yes and pushing out cobalt and nickel they're reducing it absolutely and i can tell you a long story i can just tell you a long story like uh volkswagen and tesla they're they're reducing the, the quantities of these uh high purity sulfates of nickel and uh, cobalt because it's too costly and it's a long story you know so yeah. uh, also there's something just for your interest the lithium ion phosphate, the lithium iron phosphate battery, yes, the LFP, where it's being highly used in Europe for short term uh, distances. They've just added manganese to that. And that's, I don't know if that many of your viewers really found out about it. And that's going to, they're going to reduce the iron by 50% and put in manganese. And that's going to give you a longer cycle life longer durability longer endurance oh. and I try to achieve that holy grail uh, 1000 mile battery wow yeah that's battery. right it's phenomenal and I, that's where they're going also besides the other different chemistries and uh, yep. that's what because of the because of the economics of the battery you know and 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 you know mentioning that we're talking about um how you know the, the interest right there's a lot of interest in it and now what i'm uh, you know looking at is uh basically um all of these companies uh like you know bank on core um kingston which has you know uh, some stuff going on you know we have like basf uh, stellantis um electra battery metals down in Sud sudbury can you you know talk about these parks a little bit of the uh, interests that you know are coming to canada what is it Basically, how, what's the best way I can put this question? Basically, all these EV companies are now coming to Canada and we're building parks and stuff like that. How important is that, especially having a site that will be so close to all these parks? 
Well, that's a very interesting question. I don't, again, I'm not sure if the public is really aware of this. The situation, let's take Stellantis as an example. Okay, so Stellantis is a merger of like 14 or 15 different automobile names. Yes. And they've, op they've opened up in, um, they're, op they're opening up near Windsor, Ontario. It's going to be $6.8 billion uh, project. They're going to, they're going to employ like uh, tw 2,000 to 2,500 employees. Oh, that's so what they're going to do is they're trying to integrate the whole situation. They're going to try to make um, the battery and the battery packs and also the EV battery. Okay. So, wow. so what's going to need is there's, there's something called a precursor active material park, which means that they need the, these metals or materials or minerals to be able to produce this high purity manganese salt, high purity sulfates. And what sulfates are they going to need to produce it? They have to combine two or three different materials into a precursor. And what are the main materials that they're using? They're using nickel, manganese, and cobalt. So they're going to have to refine these three minerals into, into high purity sulfates to be able to combine it into a cathode. That's called a precursor. Okay. The minerals are the high purity minerals are called a precursor because they're 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 really uh, they release. Really... It's before it's before they become yeah. um, a high sulfur. Before it's combined into uh, into the cathode. Okay. To become a cathode. Okay, I understand. And that. the cathode just electrodes in the cathode. It's a thin thin material. And when, what's amazing about uh, your company, Manganese uh, X, is that you already have a um, uh, an EV compliant uh, product. Yes, and the thing, the interesting part is we've got calls from some of these uh, precursor active parks wow. because they can't find manganese. The whole key in this complicated situation is like our whole key is like we're 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 getting closer and closer to go into production. Yes. And as I keep on saying, our mission statement is to become the first commercial publicly traded company to uh, to produce high purity manganese sulfate materials for the EV compliant market. You know? Wow, and, Martin. And that's that's the whole idea about our mission. Our mission oh, is to wow. be the first in North America to be a supply chain supplier to these North American EV com com uh, companies or cathode producers or precursors or whatever you want to get all that complicated matter you know <laughs> we really want to go well, so basically they're calling us in a nutshell and saying hey we got uh, we got nickel we got cobalt but where do we get the manganese and the thing that the interesting part about our technology is that we've developed this technology and uh in in small lab tests and it's been validated by wood with yeah. seven qps it's been really really scrutinized that we can take this technology and possibly drop it into one of these precursor parks you know and use either our feedstock or get a second feedstock or second carbonate and work it right there in the parks in conjunction with their purification systems so it's very very interesting it's extremely interesting and it's extremely gives us a lot of flexibility but the whole key right now is we just want to uh complete our pilot project where Correct. we can prove to the world that we can produce this high purity manganese sulfate on a hydrate or right? um on a larger scale wow amazing you know what martin i am so happy that uh, you came on our show once again well, we uh, respect you. Uh, we love the company. We're very excited for the future of Manganese X. Um, hearing about all these parks, uh, uh, you know, like where Stellantis is involved and all these different companies uh, it, it, right on your doorstep um, just puts Manganese X um, in a much more important position when it comes to being able to produce. And, you know, coming uh, to, from... Canada, a stable government, a stable economy. Uh, we can't, uh, couldn't have asked for anything better. So I just like to thank you so much for being on the show today. And I hope that you'll come back in the future. Absolutely. Anytime for you, Albert. 
All right. Thanks a lot, Martin. I really appreciate that. So, so for everybody that's out there, always remember research, prepare, plan, execute, stay strong onto the next show. Hello everybody. And welcome to between play stock market strategies, hit the like and the subscribe button. Head off into our description below if you'd like to know where all of our social media links are and also the podcast, whether it be Apple or Spotify. We will be doing interviews with CEOs, with analysts, and it's not only on the stock market itself, but also on cryptocurrencies and blockchains. We will have guest speakers. We will be doing panels. You will be able to enjoy a lot of different content. Have a great day and always remember, research, prepare, plan, execute. Stay strong.